everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at Royalty Declared. And if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. And today's topic is on creativity. And um, there's so much in scripture about creativity. So let's just dig into the Bible. I, I feel like I should start because my verse is Genesis 1-1. Okay, there you go. It's all yours. <laughs> so I, I think it took me a while to realize that the most creative one in the universe is actually God himself because the Bible begins, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw, saw that the light was good. So I love that because it's about him creating out of nothing within a world that is formless and void. The Holy Spirit is creative. And he then says, it is good, which took me a while to also realize that he actually just likes his creation. So it's now one of my favorite verses about creativity. Oh, I love that. I love that. I also had Genesis 1-1, like that stood out for me. I had, there were many, many verses, in fact. But why that one? Because as you say, he spoke and created something from nothing, and that is intrinsic to our DNA. Because he is good, we are also good. And how often do we doubt our goodness or do we doubt ourselves? And so what really stood out for me is like the hover, like he hovered over the matter, over nothing, which is in essence, like thinking or like being still, being in that place of stillness, and then from that place, like a bubbling up of creation. So another verse that came to me was um, Genesis 1.29, and that's the part about God creating man in his own image, in his own likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And so creation is about expanding his dominion. It's knowing who we are as royalty. Yeah. Amen. So the verse that I got um, was Exodus 25, 31 to 32. And he says, and he has filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skill to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze. And then another verse that connected to this verse that I got was Jeremiah 10, 12, which says, but God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. So what really stuck out to me in these verses was the idea that wisdom and understanding was the essence and the process of being creative. Wisdom actually causes creativity. And that is how the Lord did it. And I just thought that was really amazing. That's really cool. There's that verse is literally the one, the first verse you quoted in Exodus is the first time somebody's filled with the Holy Spirit. So he's filled with the Holy Spirit in order to create this beautiful, really intricate mm -hmm. tabernacle. And, and, and then you're connecting it with wisdom, which I've never even made that connection. I love it. Yeah. Um, even two Chronicles, um, 13 to 14, it says, Now I've sent a skilled man who has understanding, Haramabai, the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan. And his father was a man of Tyre. He is trained to work in gold, silver, bronze, iron, stone, and wood, and in purple, blue, and crimson fabrics and fine linen, and to do all sorts of engraving and execute any design that may be assigned him. Be assigned to him with your craftsman, the craftsman of my Lord, David, your father. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just amazing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And because he, he is a God of creating and he placed that in us because mm. we are created in his image. Mm -hmm. And literally everything we do here on earth is, has to do with creating things. Mm -hmm. You know, even things you don't think about. But, um, you know, people even coming up with technology, like technology changes all the time. That's crook being creative, right? Mm -hmm. Even if you work at a bank or whatever, there's a system in place. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, you have to have creative thoughts to come up with these ideas and do's and don'ts and, mm -hmm. you know, what works, what doesn't. It's, you know, our mind is constantly creating, even with our children, with our spouses, in mm -hmm. our household, 
and I, I think we take it for granted, but yeah. we are creative beings. Mm -hmm. We are, like every moment, we, we are creating something new. Yes. Every single moment. Absolutely. I actually really love that verse that you brought up, specifically because he has given creativity to these people to fulfill a purpose. So I think that's really important because it's almost like in order to complete a purpose, he has given us that ability to reproduce ideas and create things in a skilled level. And that's yeah. why, again, we can't take um, our talents and our gifting and our mm -hmm. creativity for granted. Like if you yeah. see you're good at something, I, I encourage you to actually use that because you it's given to you. It's a gift freely given to you for a reason, right? And I think a lot of us um, go on years with not really mm -hmm. using our giftings and, mm -hmm. and our talents and our creativity, right? And yeah, so the next question, we, I guess, kind of touch on that, but how do you define, under, uh, define, understand, and apply creativity to your life? So first things first, we need to realize and understand that we are all creative. I think sometimes people in certain industries or their own, because of their own experiences maybe discount or minimize their creativity. And so that is intrinsic um, to who we are because how can we create if we don't even believe that we are intrinsically creative? And so, um, you know, regardless of skill or passion, expertise, it is um, expressing your ori originality in relation to the Father. So it is intrinsically intimate, right? Because creativity flows from that place of stillness and it's from connecting and abiding to the source, to the Father. And so something um, that God's been showing me is um, it's about bringing value. Like, because there's so many ways to understand creativity, right? It's about uh, connecting to the Father, to the source, to who we are, uh, bringing value, problem solving, being the solution, because we're all called to be solutionists. And I think sometimes people who don't identify themselves as problem solvers don't see it that way. But in reality, we are all solutionists and we're all called to redefine. Um, that's what we're placed here on earth for. It's um, to redefine things and it's to birth new life in the same way that Jesus or God has birthed um, us into being. And so, yes, I'll leave it at that. Something I would like to add to that, like being called to be a solution, I noticed that how creativity applies to my life is the essence that it comes from a place of pure revelation. So as you kind of see God, as you kind of, you know, come to that place of intimacy, as you said, what ends up happening is like you grow in that revelation and you end up being able to be an extension of that original part that you were called to be. So you become an expression of his creativity. It's almost like you're the paintbrush and he's like the paint and he's like moving you and you're the brush, right? And in, in this funny way, it's like, you can give glory to God for every single one of your creativity, like creative ideas because he is actually the creator creating through you and you're also creating like in a partnership with him, right? I, I love that because I wouldn't have phrased it in quite the way of like becoming people who can bring solutions, bless mm -hmm. the world. But it, it actually was sort of, I was coming at it from my experience of believing that I wasn't a creative person mm -hmm. and realizing that when God took away you know, all the excess, like the, the patterns that I felt like I was kind of locked into and the life that I felt like I was just doing in my own strength. And, you know, like factory workers, they feel like they've almost become the factory. I think a lot of us, depending on what career we're in, we may actually end up like we've jumped onto the hamster wheel and we're just continuing. And when that started getting taken off of my life, I felt like this total freedom to just be anything, to be myself, to do whatever God was asking. And I don't think I had ever experienced that. And I think that's sort of the essence of creativity is that there is something that, that that's, it's, it's not predetermined. It, it's, it's something that's new and, but I, I love that because it's actually something bringing into the world a solution, bringing in something yeah. beautiful and something blessing. Yeah, and the thing is, it doesn't have to be a product. It doesn't, because we think about creativity in terms of artists or music, but it can be a way of being, you know, words. How can we create new realities with our words and bring encouragement? How do we, you know, those who are caretakers, it, it's, it's what we're embodying and bringing Even to the environment. 
you know, yeah. be creative in loving people because we mm-hmm. all have different love languages, right? Mm-hmm. And to get to know a person is like, how can I serve this person? How can I love on this person? I mean, that, mm-hmm. like, now to think about it, really, everything is a creative process. Yeah, for sure. Cooking, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love that you even mentioned that. I don't think I'd ever thought about this idea that, like, actually we're creative all the time because we're kind of being told, like, mm. we're not. Yeah. But it is part of our essence as as the image of God, as mm-hmm. you say. So why do you guys think that, like, wh- or whether or not, like, is is the church really um, being creative? Are they allowing that to flow? Like, do you think the church is fulfilling that call to creativity? I don't think many churches do that, actually. I think, again, is this lie that most people believe here on earth that, to be creative is, again, being an artist or something like that, right? Yeah. They don't see it, what we just discussed, that we all creative. And I think it's really important for us to be a part of a church where you're, where you're able to use your creativity and, and you know, be that um, active member of the body, you know, because we all come with different gifting, different skills, different um, things. So it's like, I feel like the church could benefit so much more if we actually allow the members Mm -hmm. to be actually a part of this and and bring to the table what God has given them. And I feel like a lot of churches don't. The pastor talks and then everybody goes home and that's that. (laughs) Yeah, we've come up with a certain way of doing church. I've even had these discussions in leadership meetings where people don't understand what I'm asking when I'm saying, could we do something else on a Sunday other than worship you know, worship music, and then a few announcements, and then a sermon. So routine. Like, what, what mm-hmm. would actually disciple people? What would, what would really transform the lives of people? And, and it's totally true. In some ways, the church is creative because we're actually, the church for thousands of years has been the source of music. Mm. Music, music is very closely, if you look at the history of music, it's closely associated with the church throughout. And some of our best secular singers actually began in the church. Um, so we are, we're, we're contributing sort of this aspect, but the way you're thinking about creativity as, you know, what can we do that's sort of beyond kind of is, is something I think the church needs desperately. Mm-hmm. And, I th- and I think like what actually can block creativity is not allowing for that extensive, like it, it's not allowing for that process of growth because creativity, it's almost like you grow into things, you flow with it, it changes and you allow it to mold into whatever it's called to be. Whenever we put limitations on it, we limit the fruit, which results in stagnancy, right? Because actually, it talks a lot in the Bible about how we should not be stagnant. We should be constantly growing. We're going from glory to glory. And when we go from glory to glory, it comes back to revelation and growing in wisdom and the wisdom of God. Yeah. 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 Even with our children, you know, like, as you guys know, I have two daughters and the oldest one, she loves art Mm -hmm. and she's gifted, right? So me as a mother seeing that, I need to feed into that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I'm getting her all kinds of art kits that she yeah. needs and, you know, maybe even put her art classes and whatever, right? So when we see something in a person, it's like, let's bring that out because mm-hmm. that's from God. That's mm-hmm. beautiful. And I think a lot of people in churches, even at job places, whatever, it's almost like the, the, the head people are, are too worried that this person would outshine them or something. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like you can give a little bit, but... Stay in your lane, stay over there. I'm yeah. still. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think so much of that has to do with what it means to be a creative leader and how can we facilitate and empower and trust God's purposes in the congregation? Because I agree there's such a lack of that and it takes kingdom values as well. Um, parenting, a lot of that is like creative parenting mm-hmm. and understanding those nuances in the realm of congregation. It's, it's almost like an openness to the unknown. That you're step, you're willing and desiring to actually step into something you don't understand, and so many people are afraid of that. Mm -hmm. They like their patterns because they feel comfortable there. Yeah, yeah, in the name of organization, right, and Mm -hmm. efficiency. So breaking free of that, being open to the spirit, because the spirit is highly creative. So, what do you guys think is the difference between a good idea and a God idea, especially in terms of creativity? I think this previous kind of conversation was leading to that for me. Um, When I think of a God idea, it's one that's actually impossible apart from God. Mm. 
Um, so people can see things and they imagine them in their own minds and then they put that into practice. They feel comfortable there. But the things that I've seen that are clearly from God, like one person went out and started praying for people and then it turns into this holistic, beautiful ministry that's changing the entire country. You know, those kinds of things are things that are literally perfect in every way. Um, and they are impossible apart from some creative genius, you know, <laughs> organizing it from above. Yeah, I think a good idea can come from us because, you know, God has given us a brain and we could think for ourselves and whatnot. So some ideas are good that we come up with on our own. But like you said, when it's a God idea, mm -hmm. it's completely out of the box. It's, mm -hmm. it's things that we didn't think about. It's, it's from him, you know. Yeah, there's like an impossibility type of trademark mm -hmm. on it. And the good and God idea, um, someone who's known for seeing that is Pedro Adeo. So he's like an eight-figure entrepreneur who's well known for his academy called 100X. And so he helps people um, basically create um, exorbitant amounts of income doing what they love and what they're good at, mm -hmm. um, mostly virtually, but I think he does other things. And so, yes, it's something that ignites life too, I believe. It's impossible. It's, um, I believe it's also sustainable, right? Like mm -hmm. the substance of a God idea is sustainable. Um, it's enduring. It has good fruits. It has momentum. And so, you know, what comes to mind is Kay Goldbeck. So she's the founder, the starter of Sing Waters, which is like a healing retreat and conference center. And so I think in her 80s or 70s, she by then had terminal illness. I don't recall what it was, but it was something related to memory and how she would get hallucinations. And so one time when she was reading the Bible, she saw a vision of a brick home. And in that moment, she had a choice, like, is that her illness or is that God? And so she believed that was God. And the rest was or is history because um, she came from nothing, like no money, like the 70-year-old terminally ill woman who decided to believe that God gave her a vision to build this brick home, which is now yeah. like a crazy, like, blessed retreat center that people around the world flow to yeah. that I, just gave me the chills man yeah. like seriously <laughs> i just love when god makes the impossible possible like that's our god right. you know when everybody's like probably think this lady's crazy and i hear stories like this all the time you know when when you know people had given up on everything or you don't think anything will happen and then god is like no no i got something more well, yes. when you tell that story you have to say that she actually sees this vision mm -hmm. but then she actually sees the place in real life like mm -hmm. it really it really yes. existed yes I find that to be so beautiful because God actually gives us certain burdens on our heart that we want to find the solution for and I think that was really interesting because it ties back to what you said Naomi about how creativity is being a solution or allowing God to use you as a solution and not knowing how you're going to get there but by faith, allowing God to lead you into being that solution. And, and you know what? That's a process, right? Just yeah. because it's a God thing doesn't mean it's going to be easy. I mean, mm -hmm. I think from reading the word, we see yeah. it's not easy at all, mm -hmm. right? You know, a lot of times when God has given me visions, I'll come like, okay, I, that's what it is. But he doesn't necessarily give me every step of the way and, what, you, know, how, you know, and tell me about all the hard things I might face through it. But... Again, when it is a God thing, he will give you the endurance, the strength, everything you need to get through that. That's why we need to pray for long suffering, ladies and gentlemen. We forget <laughs> to pray for that. We yeah. need to pray for long suffering because it's very easy to give up, mm -hmm. you know, when we at the moment don't see what we think we're supposed to see. Because you're not always going to every day see fruits. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. there's, there's faith, right? We mm -hmm. still, during the hard times, and our faith gets tested a lot. God will give you this assignment you know, and again, through that whole scripture, we could see that. Yeah, when the going gets tough. And so speaking of easy and like persevering through things and staying anchored in that vision, what unlocks creativity? I think, I think that because children are naturally creative, it's, it's this verse that says you have to become like children of God. Um, like like children to receive the kingdom of God is is actually becoming real for me where I'm realizing that when I am in a place where I'm no longer striving, mm. I know that God is God, I am still, I am childlike, um, those things are going to happen naturally because I'm no longer caught up in this kind of assumption of or just running after things mm. that I just assume I have to do. And so that creative creativity comes from a place of being childlike. I think that's really beautiful because 
what came to my mind was the idea that it has to do with worship as well. Like creativity stems from worship. And it was so interesting because like earlier on when I mentioned the verse that God created all these things with wisdom and understanding, when, when you look up like what is the beginning of wisdom? It's the fear of God. And what is the fear of God? It's actually the definition of that is not just reverence, but it's also worship. How interesting is that? It's like the root of creativity is a deep awe and revelation of who God is. And to realize that gives you ri- like vision. It's probably because it all comes from him. Like, yeah. it's, it's not, maybe we're not, the cre- like maybe it's because God has sort of poured it into us that we're, we're able to pour it out. Like I don't, I don't really get it because I don't, I, I know we're saying we're creative, but I wonder whether we're creative because because God was creative first, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, starts everything starts with him, I think. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when I'm thinking of those who don't believe in God, because there's millions of people out there who don't believe in God, and they are so creative, and they come up with all these ideas from, you know, all the people in the sports industry and, you know, Hollywood, all of these things, right? So you just wonder, Hollywood is bad, but we're going to take over. <laughs> But you know, it's a whole when, I, when I see that, when I see that, right? So I'm just like, wow. But that just shows you what a great, amazing God we serve that even those who don't know him yet, he still puts creativity into them. You know yes. what I mean? Absolutely. He is so good. And we, we embody, right? We, he, we have his uh, imprint. And so what comes to mind for me is like synchronization because I've had to go through so much healing in my early walk. And so being whole in our body, soul, mind, spirit, our hearts and our minds, like from that place of wholeness and, and even hearing um, his voice. I feel like so much of creativity is being able, to, being able to hear him, being able to trust ourselves, which kind of ties into worship for sure, um, trusting our ability to create. And so with that comes mindset right? There's the core beliefs and what we think of ourselves, identity piece, um, awareness, because it helps us to course correct and essentially think of new possibilities. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely about awareness, you know what I mean? Um, That's just with anything in our lives, you know, good or bad. It's like being aware, okay, what sets me up? What just triggered me? Why is this happening? Like, these are questions we need to ask ourselves constantly to come up with a solution, Right? And so we're not continue, you know, repeating the same mistakes or whatnot. And when you're aware of yourself, and, and that's why it's good to be around um, the right people because they will confirm your giftings. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you don't know, but when you're out there and, and somebody even said, you know, the best way to know your giftings and your talents is to serve. Right? When you're out there helping and serving, that's, it comes out. Like it comes out of you. And then people could see, oh, my goodness, this girl's really good at that. You know, and with surfing, I mean, even singing, even writing, you know, that's all still a form of serving when you're out there doing these things. Any type of work you do, it's it's form of serving, right? Yeah, for sure. Another thing that came to mind, you know, like in the realm of service, because I do speak with so many clients in any given day uh, by phone. Um, and so something that people say a lot is, I'm not good with technology. Like, that's really common. And a lot of times I would just kind of chime in like, oh, you don't need to be perfect. You don't need to be good. Uh, You just got to be functional. So even how we talk to ourselves and the things that we speak over, whether even if it is a limitation, but it's like how can we frame it in such a way where, like, you're not limiting yourself, but there is room for growth. Like, not perfection, but, hey, I'm growing into it. Like, I'm not good at it, but I'm getting to... um, I think better at it. Yeah, and I think that is really trusting the Lord with the fruit of that vision, right? Because it all ties back to, like, God telling us to multiply, be fruitful and multiply. That is a creative process, right? When we give birth, we're multiplying, we're being fruitful. And I think that stems from what you said about, like, us being well, whole, right? That actually causes us to produce the right fruit. So I think that's really important. You know what, at the same time, I found in my own life, Sometimes I got mostly creative, and I see it in other artists and whatnot, too. When I was actually in a very low place, mm. you know, my writing was always, like, a form of healing for me. I'll pick up the pen and paper since I was a kid, and the pen and paper were my best friend for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I would just start writing poetry and this and that from a very deep place, of a hurt place, right? And as I was writing, it was like I was releasing all of that, and... Mm-hmm. And, and it was very creative, right? So I think actually a lot of our creativity 
can come from a very deep wounded place. For sure. Yeah. And that's so beautiful because that's about reframing, right? It's asking the questions of like, how can I, what if, what is possible, as opposed to l- allowing that to sabotage us, which mm-hmm. is so much easier to do. And so in that realm of things, like what blocks creativity then? I was thinking about the church and creativity, and I was actually thinking this divide that we have between sacred and secular. Mm blocks it because Christians will sometimes struggle with creativity because they think, oh, it can't look this way. It can't look Mm, that way. And, and yet I see one of my revelations about creativity was when I was canoeing and we were in the middle of nowhere and I saw this beautiful, it was just a rock face, but there were all these small plants and flowers and trees growing out of the rock face. And I just stared at it and I went, it doesn't make any sense. This thing is here and nobody's looking at it. And yet it's the most amazing painting. It's not here for a purpose. It's just that God actually creates beauty. And I feel like that's sort of, we almost need to blow out our our divides between sacred and secular and just say, you know, if God is is creative, what does that look like? How can we just be, you know, going after it in any possible way? Yeah, but I think even beauty's purpose, right? Like I think it's, everything has its purpose. Um, but I think what blocks it is really us. Yeah. It's us, you know? It, it's either we're giving the legal right to the enemy and to, to believe in those lies, whatever, but at the same time, I feel like a lot of us Christians blame everything on the enemy, right? And a lot of times it's us. I think yeah. most times it's us. Even, like, again, the enemy has no power over any of God's children unless we give him power, unless we open doors, right? So we really need to go back to ourselves Right. And 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 really, it, that's why inner healing and all these things are so important to find out what is going on there. Right. But Mara, you had uh, some questions there, too, before time is up. Yeah. So my question was about you girls, um, you ladies. What what has God actually shown you personally? Like what kind of revelations have you had about creativity from God himself? I think like. God in the Bible used so much beautiful Im- imagery, like beautiful pictures to describe things that he feel about us. He calls us his bride when we're not wearing a wedding gown. He calls us like, you know what I mean? He calls us his children when we're like 70 years old or something. I, I wore a wedding gown twice, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know if that's something to be proud of or <laughs> But something that I really took out of that is God is not limited by the boundaries of what things look like. He knows how to express through every av- mm-hmm. like every avenue, whether it be words, whether it be images. And even if you think about the prophetic and how one is meant to flow in that, one is meant to do what God is telling them, it seems totally outrageous, but all of it has purpose, it has meaning. And I think the essence of that creativity is to create something with meaning and purpose and so that people can really grab hold of that. And I think that's what the meat of it is. It's purpose and imagery, purpose in what you're trying to express, and purpose in echoing the Father's heart. I think I understand what you mean, because I remember meeting, um, I was was in in scholarship surrounded by all these academics, but there was a, one of my fellow scholars was an organist, and I'm a musician, I play piano and violin, and we ended up having a conversation about how when you're a musician, everything you approach is going to have a frame it's going to look it's going to look good no matter like you'll give a talk and the way that you'll present it will actually be a little bit more artistic than the average joe and and so i love that 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 like god is not he he's he's the god of those little details you know yeah over the years i think creativity has been redefined for me and for sure like worship and intimacy stillness all of that is huge even mental rehearsals like how do I unlock more of that by tapping into visualization which is a form of prayer and so in the realm of maybe shifting and changes it's meekness because another translation for meekness is actually discipline and self-control and God tells us that it's actually the meek that will inherit the earth I think that's in Proverbs and so it's understanding that where structure and systems organization is concerned like that can actually bring order and amplify creativity so maybe that doesn't address creativity at the core per se but it's facilitating and unlocking more of that and also even praying like there's so many creative ways of doing it right like look at the way David did it through Psalms and um, for me again when I was 
talking about the pen and paper, like a lot of times this is how I would talk to God. Because when I was younger and whatnot, um, you know, or not a mature Christian, I didn't even know how to pray. So I would just write things down. And, and then he would speak to me through writing. And I'll be like, whoa, where did this come from? You know what I'm saying? So he, like, knows each and every one of us. He knows our language is what we understand. He speaks to me differently than he speaks to you or you. You know what I mean? So even in, in prayer, prayer is creative. It's just beautiful. And, I mean, even with the show, right, um, like God mentioned, that God had given me this vision for so long since I was a kid about a talk show. Mm. And I, so I was just, just waiting on that. I was chasing that and just was not working. And in this perfect timely, it happened with the right, with the right females. And um, from the whole process, from the logo to the name, like I remember going over it and we picked this logo, you know, you, you know, um, Gorbia oh, yeah. does, does the logos <laughs> and all the, all the technical stuff. And um, she, yeah, we, we decided on this logo, but I woke up the next day and I wasn't feeling right. And I drove you guys crazy. <laughs> I'm like, no, man, I don't feel this was Holy Spirit led. I, I'm not feeling it. So it was a whole day. I was like, no, no, it's not like this, not like that. And then once you got that, um, I was like, that's it. That's it. Holy Spirit was, this is it. Even with the name, right? We're going mm -hmm. through all these names. I was like, no, 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 it doesn't sit well. And then royalty declared. I was like, boom. Because mm -hmm. with that, it was like, it's finished. Mm -hmm. It's declared. The work on the cross is finished. And we're royalty, right? So, uh, you know, what we, Gorbia, you and I talked about earlier is too, um, God will give you a vision, but he doesn't necessarily give you every detail that you mm -hmm. need, right? It's a process, yeah. and he might give you glimpses here and there, but I still don't know, like, the, the, the fullness of it all, mm -hmm. but I know it's a God thing, so it, 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 it requires a lot of trust, mm -hmm. a lot of faith. Again, even if we don't see a lot of viewers or donations coming and all these things right away, we're still going to believe, and we're going to keep yeah. going until God tells us something else, right? And I think it's actually really amazing that you brought up the logo, actually, because that was totally a creative process. Like, I didn't, I have to be honest, like, I didn't have enough faith to complete it at such a short amount of time. But you were like, girl, you're going to get this done. Trust me. And then you <laughs> prayed for me. And then, like, just the creative, you know, ideas started flowing. Like, I started seeing the symbolism of that crown, of royalty, of Holy Spirit bringing us up the steps, those royal steps mm -hmm. into that place. And I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. Like, this is imagery from God. And yeah, everything I, has And you purpose. said usually with stuff like that, it's going to take you weeks. And, yeah. you know, so I was like, girl, don't you know our God? You're going to get this done right now. <laughs> yes. And so the substance of creativity collapses time. Yes. And did you know, actually, that the first things, um, the first point of creation for God and Adam was actually through spoken word? That is so good. Right? Adam yeah. named the animals. That was when he first created. And so royalty declared, like, it, it's just such a symbolic, prophetic wrap-up of, of the creation story. Yes. God is so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the time is running up. I, I, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And, I, and we pray that, um, yeah, you, you, you bring out, that God will help you bring out this creativity. And believe it, believe it. Anything that you really enjoy, you're passionate about, you're good at, don't ignore it. It's there for a reason. And uh, anybody who does, has not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to do so. Um, seek him and you will find him, the Bible says. He's right there. And, and, and salvation is free. You just have to accept him and it's right there for you. And, uh, yeah, Gorbia, would you like to pray for viewers regarding creativity, please? Um, Lord, I just lift up every viewer, every person that has been feeling even, like, stagnant in their creative process. Lord, I pray that you would break through those doors with divine revelation on creativity, Lord. I pray that the show would just encourage them to realize the fullness of their potential, that they're created to create, that it is a intimate and and a partnership with you that allows them to be who they're called to be, that every single part has its significance and everything that we're called to do has a purpose. So I just pray, oh God, that if there's any blinders, anything, any blockages, Lord, that you would just break that off in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you would just ignite a new fire and flame for creativity, Lord. I pray divine revelation on the things that you have called your people to, Lord, that there would no longer be blockages or hindrances, but they would just go full, full throttle into the things that you have called them to. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. 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 So we want to encourage you to know that creativity is in your intrinsic divine DNA. It is who you are. It is a part of your identity. Why? Because God is creative. He created you. So we bless you with that and know that it is also a growth process. When, when and as you're growing into your vision and your dreams in Christ, there's going to be things you're going to be, that you'll need to learn, certain skill sets. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we want to speak also that um, mm. the long suffering, the perseverance, mm. and to continue to be encouraged and to ignite with new fire and anticipation mm. in Jesus' name. I also wanted to encourage just real quick that your voice is valuable and your creativity is totally connected to your voice. So be encouraged, guys. Amen. Don't give that up. Everybody, everybody can't stop talking about this topic. <laughs> we were having issues even before. Um, But we would like to remind you that if you have been blessed by this, to forward it to your friends, like and subscribe, check us out on Instagram or Facebook or our website. All the links are below. And we would love it if you are blessed by this ministry and feel led to support us. Please donate at the PayPal link below. Yes, be creative and donate. (laughs) Uh, Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. We'll see you next week, Royals. See you next week.